Jeremy Maleke merges healthcare and uh, software expertise to create an integrative medicine approach through his company, Biocanic. Please welcome Jeremy Maleke. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate being invited to speak. Uh, this is always fun for me. You know, most of my presentations are around the business, but we get to dig into uh, my personal health journey. Um, thanks for everybody that answered the poll. By way, just how many people know the term functional health or functional medicine? Okay, good, most people here. Awesome, so this is my journey through the functional health approach. Um, just quickly, a little bit about me. I am a biomedical nerd by training. Uh, so I was signals and systems. I did uh, signal processing and machine learning. And it's not this cheating machine learning of today. This is the old school machine learning where I had to code the algorithms of MATLAB. Can't just throw it into an AWS bucket. Um, spent 20 years in the traditional healthcare world, mainly in electronic medical records, telemonitoring. I know I talked to someone who has a CPAP device, but the ResMed Connected Devices Initiative was something that I did as a, a, a kind of transformational project there. I'm now the CEO and co-founder of Biocanic, uh, and I'm gonna present a little bit about health intelligence and my vision for the future. I have two TED Talks on this, so also if you want any of this information, I'm in the back. I can't hide from you, so just come by and grab me. Um, but really, you know, my goal is to become a catalyst for a new world of healthcare, really driven in the power of health intelligence uh, and creating a marketplace so consumers can take back control of their health. It's always interesting when I put a shirtless picture up here, not quite Darius from earlier, um, but this was me when I was an executive at ResMed. Um, you know, like most people, I was active, thought I was doing all the right things. You know, I was eating organic, gluten-free, working out all the time, so October, all of those, you know, different types of tips and tricks. But the reality was my health was going in the wrong direction. No matter what I did, every objective marker was going in the wrong way. Um, my trigger point for me was when I hit a peak weight of 240 pounds. And I call it the worst day of my life, but that was really the transformation. And this is really my story about kind of going through that process. Um, I, did, I always like to throw this in here, because I'm gonna come back to it. Uh, this is an MRI of my back uh, from 2009. I know most people aren't radiologists and probably can't read it. The big important thing is that right there. That is a extruding disc, uh, which is, uh, means that the, the, the actual lamina itself is sticking out in both directions. Uh, and I was probably doing about eight years of cortisone injections, including ablation therapy. I was walking down the pathway for either um, a spinal fusion or disc replacement. And I'm gonna come back to that, so just remember that image. So my journey started in 2013 when I started working with a functional health practitioner. I won't disparage her because it was my wife. Uh, she had just graduated from functional diagnostic nutrition school. Um, you know, it, it was really interesting at the time because back then, you know, we were running a lot of different labs. Um, and that's part of the functional health approach is really trying to understand the root cause more holistically around what's going on. So there's extensive qualitative questionnaires. You may have run across this in your own experience, things like a medical symptom questionnaire. GI maps the stool microbiome. Dutch test is an advanced hormone test. I have my genetic testing and organic acids, a micronutrient and environmental toxicity. But as an individual consumer, okay, it was great, it was interesting, but it wasn't really actionable for me. And how do we actually synthesize and figure out what to do? So just to give you another kind of rational drowning, this is meant to be an eye chart, but this is the amount of stuff, right? So think about your patient portal, your epic my chart, where you have a file folder with a bunch of stuff that you never actually look at, right? So I had six assessments in Excel. I had multiple lab results in PDF. My supplement recommendations were in a Word document. I had a Keto Mojo. I also have a glucose meter. I have my Garmin Fitness Wearable and a sleep tracker. So as a consumer, how do you actually make sense and create an action plan out of this? Um, and so really, how do we actually think about synthesizing it? So I'm gonna walk you through the actual perspective of what we had to come to to figure out what was wrong for me. So this is stool microbiome test. Uh, I had H. pylori. Has anybody ever heard of H. pylori? Okay. It's actually fairly common, but it was an indication of some underlying gut dysbiosis. I had candida, which is a yeast infection, or yeast overgrowth. I had micronutrient deficiencies. You can see some of the key ones up there. Um, I had a full thyroid panel done. 
very uninteresting, and I'm going to probably make some outlandish statements that people won't agree with, but we'll come back to that. Uh, this is my cortisol pattern. Um, the red line is what it was, so I was elevated cortisol throughout the day, which kind of correlates with some of my sleep issues. But this was the most important insight. So this was an advanced hormone test called a Dutch test. I'm not sure if anybody's ever heard of it. It's fairly uh, well known in the industry now. This was the most important to me for my own individual health journey. Again, it's an eye chart, happy to walk you through it. But the red box here is the estrogen metabolites. So if you remember that, you know, sexy shirtless picture of me, I was not low testosterone. I was estrogen dominant. Had I gone down the pathway for all of those, those commercials that you hear on the TV, I think they were even on the Super Bowl this year, you start slamming testosterone at me, I create even more estrogen. Why is that? Well, there was a couple different things. So and if we look at this individual pathway, the, well, I guess it's hard to see if I can, there we go, this pathway right here, that's called the 4-hydroxy pathway. That is the cancer-causing pathway. When you hear about uh, estrogen-driven breast cancers or estrogen cancers, that is the metabolite you're concerned about. Both my mom and my grandmother have had breast cancer. My grandmother died from it. My mom's doing fine, thank you. Um, but here's the issue. I was still eating high carb, great. So I needed to go low carb. The problem is the carbs were driving the estrogen, which was filling the tank, but I don't empty the tank as well either. So even going low carb, I also needed to support the detoxification system. And so what that ends up looking like is all of my estrogens are basically clogged up. Now why is that? That's because I am actually, I have the SNPs for MTHFR. How many people have heard of MTHFR, right? Exactly. So when we talk about methylation, methylation is the process by which we're able to assist in the detoxification process. So my individual health journey was a combination of identifying both what was going on from you know, a microbiome perspective, but also from a hormonal pathway perspective. And so really, it took five years to get to the root of my issue. So my gut dysbiosis is always there. I had family history. Uh, not breastfed as a kid, chronic antibiotics. My family pediatrician just said, leave him on the pink stuff because he's always got ear infections. <laughs> and that was, that, that was the 80s, right? So my, my gut flora is always messed up. And so yeah, I'm sure many of you get hit up with all this, oh, feed your gut, feed your microbiome. There's probably nothing I can do about that. I just have to be aware of it and understand that. It affects my immune system, so I do get sicker than, more often than my wife. But the real issues that I had to focus in on for me was the cortisol dysregulation and the elevated estrogen levels. So the transformation was one, how do we get that cortisol in balance? Sleep, right? Everybody knows the importance of sleep. I had to reprioritize my sleep so that I was getting that good sleep cycle regulation and then focus on estrogen detoxification. So one, going low carb, but then also supporting it through methyl donors. So things like creatine, choline, methylated B vitamins is now what really has led to that transformation. And so what does that look like from an overall perspective? This is my Withings weight data. I told you we were gonna geek out on data. So this was that 240 day, and then this was the transformation. But there was still even more insights that we had to figure out. So I started keto, then I went to modified carnivore. It wasn't until here that we identified a number of key food sensitivities. Okay, if you're gonna start a ketogenic diet, what are the first products that you're gonna increase? Beef, cow milk, heavy cream. I am reactive to it. So you can imagine that I struggled to really get into ketosis in a ketogenic diet. So it wasn't until later on did we actually understand really what those inflammatory foods were for me. And then you can see it led to even a bigger transformation there. So, you know, from a tracking and optimization standpoint, this is what we do. We kind of bring it together. So here, this is that 4-hydroxy pathway. You can see this is where I started. Now I'm actually tracking and maintaining that over time. But more importantly, this was HSCRP, right? Everybody heard about C-reactive protein, just a general inflammation marker. You can see now that's basically 0 or 0 0.1. And then the question people challenge me, nobody's reactive to beef unless you have alpha-gal. 
well, I've had repeated food sensitivity tests, and I ran the alpha-gal test, and I am not alpha-gal, I am just reactive to beef, and it sucks. <laughs> but really what you know, this comes down to is there's one dependable rule about your health, and that is it depends. Depends on your diet, depends on your lifestyle, depends on your genetics, depends on what you do, how you do it, how you sleep, and everything. And that is the real challenge to kind of thinking about how do you do this as an individual. And so for us, we really focus on um, bringing together this information so that both consumers and their practitioners can see this, again, an eye chart. Uh, if you want to see it, I'll show you in the back. Um, but again, this is how we start to bring all of those pieces of information together, right? No longer is it going to be acceptable for you to just have a 16-page PDF document with your hormonal pathways. How do your hormones relate to your gut health, that relate to your genetics, that relate to your blood markers, that relate to your food sensitivities? You can see my columns for gut health and food sensitivity are very long. That's not normal, but that's because of me and my own individual gut microbiome. So what do we do? So we built a technology platform really fun uh, focusing on functional and integrated practitioners, helping individuals get to the root like, like I was with my wife. Um, we bring together all the different wearables, a lot of the partners in the room, so Chronometer, Aikido Mojo, been a longtime partner. So our goal is to help bring this information to really unlock what we call health intelligence. And that's the idea, I think, um, Ancestralize was talking about the same idea, which is really the future of health is going to be AI-driven. It's impossible to expect a single individual to understand everything about everyone all the time. The only way that we get there is by building the data sets. Right, so creating longitudinal data, I think Darius even said, take accountability for your, your own information, track and trend that information. So for me, using an at-home blood spot test, like a Cyfox test, and being able to see those markers improving, understanding how I'm changing those levers in my life, and is it leading me to the outcomes that I want to desire as an individual. So, you know, this is my information, my contact. I know most of you are not practitioners, but you know, feel free to stop by, follow us. Um, we do a lot of information. We highlight a lot of uh, individuals creating uh, information around different approaches, different thinking, detoxification protocols for mold and mycotoxins, if you guys have ever had that issue. Um, so we create a lot of value. Uh, happy to give you more information about our system. I've already talked to a number of you out there. Um, we can get access to the labs, to other devices as well for you. Um, and then if you are interested in learning about, more about functional testing, one of our partners is running a five-day summit um, that's very inexpensive. They're going to go through specialty lab hormone testing. Happy to provide that information to you. It's functional diagnostic nutrition, which is my wife's cert certification program. So even if you're just interested, it's a great way to get smarter about um, all of that different stuff. So with that, I have 127 left. If there's a question. Any other thoughts? All right. Cool. Thank you.